Howdy, hey. So, you want a keyboard? And you don't want to give up your numpad? Well, howdy, hey. I'm Hippiotech, and I'm starting a bit of a segment here where I look at keyboards that actually have numpads, and... Oh, what's that? Censor that! Censor that! The knob is too big! So, if you watched my last video, I covered a couple full-sized keyboards. Those were the iQnix boards, and I'll put it up in the top right. However, in this video, I'm covering much more of a budget offering. However, it might be budget because it's stealing its design? So, this is the EpoMaker TH96. It's a full-size keyboard that's in a Kickstarter right now. But, as I mentioned before, it's a bit more budget, starting at just 130 bucks. But $130 is still pretty expensive. I'm gonna be putting it to the test against every claim it makes in its Kickstarter. Now, will it be able to withstand this? Let's find out and stay tuned. So this is a Kickstarter from EpoMaker. And what's most interesting about this Kickstarter, I'll reveal later. But first things first, let's talk about it. Just surface level. It's the EpoMaker TH96 QMK and VIA supporting gasket mounted mechanical keyboard. All that on paper, sounding kind of good, right? Now this, hold on. Guys, I need you to tell me something. Take this in, soak this up. Here's an image and image number two. They are the same board. I found these two boards. I found that they're incredibly similar. And I was like, hey, Epo Maker. I reached out to my contact. I was like, these boards are the same. And they were like, no, they're not the same. E essentially, what they said is they're the same factory. It's completely legal. It's totally normal in a lot of fields to rebrand OEM stuff. However, because it's a Kickstarter, I feel like it's worth mentioning that it's not a unique product. A lot of times Kickstarter is used for innovation. I have no problem with this at all, by the way. I'm just bringing it up so you can be more informed as a consumer. But what is unique is they have actually differentiated some stuff for the Kickstarter. They wanted to bring QMK and VIA support to this keyboard and the OEM did not support that. So that's what the Kickstarter is for. They said they changed the PCB in their version. Granted, I don't think the prototype that they sent me is gonna have a different PCB. We'll stay tuned for that, we'll see. Now, a little bit of background about the Kickstarter. I would say this Kickstarter is basically very little risk because it's a basically existing product. For 129 bucks, it gets you this keyboard. So if this thing is good, that's good value. That's actually really good value. Silicone gasket mounted design? That's insane! Now that we've looked at the Kickstarter, let's start by just getting it unboxed and taking a look at the board itself. We've got a prototype of the EpoMaker TH96. Custom branded EpoMaker box. It says manufactured by EpoMaker. Now is this saying that EpoMaker owns the manufacturing plant for the other board? That's what they told me, so that could be true. So the unboxing experience is pretty standard. It's a keyboard, it's some accessories, Kind of a weird touch to plastic mod it like this. Like I can type, but I'm not really getting a lot of like feedback, you know? Are these clone keycaps? I don't know it. It's nothing extremely out of the ordinary, but since we're on the topic of boxes, that box might not get to you for a couple months. As I mentioned before, this is a Kickstarter. So if you're looking for something in stock, maybe we need something like the Keychron Q5. So this board comes with some very pretty keycaps, but are those the clones I was talking about? Let's do a little bit of investigation here. It's definitely a similar color scheme, but I need to know if the novelties are the same here. No, the novelties are totally different. I'm gonna say it's not clones enough. So no, it, the keycaps weren't cloned. So let's look a little bit more into the board. This board has an amazingly massive knob. <clears throat> Absolutely gigantic big chungus of a knob. It's CNC aluminum with a plastic feeling top. I'm not sure if that's an aluminum top or not. It has a nice little click to it when you turn it, which is very satisfying. It also clicks down. This keycap set that comes with it is very pretty, so we like that. And the chassis itself is plastic. Now, with any board like this, I wanna make sure that it sounds good, it feels good, and it's relatively competitive in the market. I think the relative competitiveness, we've got that price-wise, it's priced pretty well. But whether or not it sounds good and feels good, well, I guess we're gonna have to put that to the test pretty soon, eh? Now, checking out the back, we've got some interesting stuff actually okay so first things first is you notice a usb dongle right here that pulls out for 2.4 gigahertz wireless this is if you don't have the via version we've also got these two stage rubber feet that flip out and then some non-stage rubber on the bottom as well makes me wonder how i'm actually going to get this thing open though now something that is worth pointing out on this board is this incredibly interesting little back panel right here this little cutout has a button 
or a switch and we can flip it for the wireless version and it lights up look at that with full RGB. Yeah, uh, there's a bunch of different modes for it, but they're pretty typical standard RGB modes. If you're into RGB, there you go. It checks that box. Let's check out some other features. Now, stabilizers. Oh. Oh. Okay, so stabilizers would need work. So, oh, they're yellow. Why are they yellow? Oh my. Aww. Aww. Do your stabilizers sound rattly? Aww. This is how you make them not sound rattly. In here, I keep my little syringe with Permatex Dielectric Grease for stabilizers. I just basically shoot up like that, just a little bit, not too much. There's already actually some lube on here, so I don't want to end up over lubing them. Otherwise, they'll just end up mushy. Okay, that sounds better already. That actually sounds quite perfect now. Okay, so this board has blue hot swap sockets, which are pretty cool. And it also has south facing LEDs and five pin support. So a lot of keyboards will come with standard Cherry MX switches, which you might have heard of before. They're all kind of meh, but this keyboard has something under its sleeve and it's the switches. What are the switches you ask? I know you're about to ask that. You're your freaking rascal. So these switches are amazingly pretty. They say they're an EpoMaker custom switch. Well, number one, it matches my Pixel Comet desk mat, which is pretty cool. It also comes with a couple different options for switches. You could get the tactile switch, which is the and I'll put that up on screen right now. The tactile switch, I can't review that because it's not in front of me. Those might be nice. They also come with an option of a semi-silent linear switch, which I'm very curious to try. Those look quite interesting. And that's about all I got in that respect for the switch options for this board. So we talked about the keycaps a little bit before, but there's something else that's very special about them. You might have noticed that they're kind of flat. Well, that's due to the profile. These are MDA Profile V2. Similar to XDA, they are a flatter type of profile keycap. They have a slightly higher top row. It's an interesting profile to type on. It's definitely not my favorite, but it exists. So this keyboard makes some bold claims about the interior, as we saw earlier, comparing it to the board that's literally itself. So we've got a gasket mount, we've got silicone, and we've got who knows what inside of it. So I'm gonna use my super strong rock climber fingers, rock climber hippio by the way, to pry this thing open. Ah, whew. Okay, so this is actually really interesting. It kind of just fits in there as a normal gasket mount. Like it's, I think the top fitting on like this is really making it so it doesn't have much breathing room. Like it's fitting on too tight. And you need a little bit of breathing room in your gasket mounts. Um, but as you can see here, it's on also a lot of silicone, like a lot of silicone. These are the little gaskets right here. Squish, 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 squish. Are those little gaskets doing much? Hard to say, really. I don't think they're doing much at all. So yeah, you can see the switches when it's taken apart like this. You can see the gasket mount when it's taken apart like this. Now let's do something fun. Oh, the knob. Oh, it pops right off. Yeah, it's just a standard knob actually. On the inside, we've got a lot of silicone. And I'm gonna try taking it out to see if it's gonna make the board sound better and also see if it's going to make the gasket performance better. So, oh, okay. We've encountered our first roadblock that is three bits of wire and I will pop these out. These are for the batteries right here, these two. And then this is for the knob. That means that it's got a daughter board connection, the knob, which is quite interesting and the USB port. So you're actually not sacrificing gasket performance for the USB port. Okay, this weirdly feels glued in. Also, yeah, this wire was weirdly glued in or I'm completely dumb as I was unable to remove it after trying for a solid four or five minutes on stream. I could be dumb for sure. I could be dumb. I do that all the time actually. I'm dumb quite frequently. Um, anyways, as a very first step, I wanna remove the silicone and see if it sounds better and then I just need to plug these guys back in. So I wanna see if I get more gasket performance by taking out the silicone. Wow. Yeah, no, that is a noticeable different gasket performance. It's also a lot less harsh. So I think they should include different density gaskets or maybe cut the thickness of the silicone a little bit to give it a little bit more room. This keyboard is really solid for the price. You can't go wrong with it. It's got the knob, it's got decent switches. You basically don't need to mod it, but you can if you want to, but there's other contenders in the sea, like the Keychron Q5 and other boards that I might be checking out soon. So maybe it's not perfect, but you definitely won't go wrong with it.
Anyways, if you like this video, please hit the bell and subscribe button. YouTube is not showing people my videos, so if you want to see my videos, then hit it. Oh gosh, the sound test is coming. Please watch the whole thing to support my YouTube algorithm overload. I'm a spy. Guy streams with big knob out. Oh, censor that.